Alrighty, so today's going to be a bit of a double header. I've got two things I need to discuss. Uh, the first and foremost uh, will be the Dutch Farmer Rebellion, uh, which I haven't been paying a whole lot of attention to. I have seen it bubbling up and it just hadn't had any time to really look into it until today. And second, excuse me, will be uh, the Georgia Guidestones, uh, which were bombed this morning at about 4 a.m. And I think that these uh, stories are uh, certainly relevant to one another. So, uh, first of all, the, the issue with the Dutch farmers, uh, the Dutch government has put in a uh, severe restrictions on nitrogen. I don't know if it's a total nitrogen ban, uh, because they now consider nitrogen to be a pollutant. Uh, there is a lot of hysteria about nitrogen here in the United States, too, in Florida. A lot of the coastal counties have uh, uh, what are called black nitrogen blackouts for many months of the year, where you're not allowed to put nitrogen down on your grass uh, because they don't want it running off and uh, theoretically creating algae blooms. Uh, in reality, however, um, since those bans only apply to uh, people doing it for ornamental purposes, you know, putting nitrogen on their yard just for purely cosmetic purposes and not, you know, doesn't apply to farming. Uh, I believe most of the nitrogen uh, is, that is put into, you know, that ends up running off into the waterways uh, still ends up there because it's coming from farming. And politically, uh, nobody's going to go after uh, the uh, uh, agriculture here in Florida and try to just stop the farmers from putting nitrogen down uh, and run them out of business. In the Netherlands, however, that's not the case. Uh, they were, they went ahead and they decided, you know what, no, we're going to put our foot down and uh, we're going to stop those farmers from putting down nitrogen and we're going to put them out of business. And so the farmers are rising up uh, because, you know, this will be the end of agriculture in the Netherlands. And so they've got a pretty simple principle. If we're not allowed to work, well, then we're going to stop other people from working, too. So they're blocking highways. Uh, they're blocking the airport entrances. They're trying to block um, uh, seaports, which um, that is an important industry, I believe, in the Netherlands because they have Rotterdam and uh, a lot of shipping into uh, the you know, mainland Europe goes through Rotterdam. You know, it's up there with the likes of New York, Long Beach, and Shanghai, uh, from what I understand. But I, I haven't seen any confirmation that the farmers have been able to block uh, shipments through Rotterdam, but I've seen uh, footage of them blocking the, uh, the highway into Germany uh, from Holland, which I believe Holland is um, one of the bigger, at least by GDP, uh, probably the biggest state in the, the Netherlands, because remember it is plural. A lot of people in America, um, when they think of the Netherlands, they only think of Holland when there are, you know, at least a few other uh, Dutch states, such as uh, Zealand, from which New Zealand gets its name. I believe um, Australia was originally called New Holland, and when the, the British acquired uh, New Holland and New Zealand, they renamed the big one Australia. Uh, and uh, New Zealand, they left, but they changed the spelling to make it seem like the word zeal. But that has nothing to do with this with this uprising. Um, th these Dutch farmers are pretty much the Canadian truckers of Europe. Uh, they're engaging in similar tactics, and they have a pretty similar message. They're standing up against, uh, you know, the uh, you know global cap consensus. They're standing up against. Uh, the World Economic Forum, you know, Klaus Schwab, but also, uh, you know, the Bilderberg Group, which are, from what I understand, they seem to be kind of the same things, ex except Bilderberg is like a secret version of WEF. But I bring up Bilderberg because Mark, R Mark Rutte, uh, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, who is, I believe, uh, considered to be a center-right uh, politician, uh, has been at, like, every Bilderberg meeting for the past few years. Uh, I I think out of all the world leaders, from what I recall, he's attended most frequently. You have a lot of world leaders that don't show up to Bilderberg every year, uh, but Mark Rutte seems to be there every single year. And he's taken it upon himself to abolish agriculture in his country at a time in which uh, we're going to have a global food shortage. You know, very good timing. Um, but, you know, even still, telling people that they can't grow food uh, it seems pretty extreme. 
It seems like something an authoritarian country like China or Russia would do. In fact, it is the kind of thing that China does. China evicts people from their land all the time when they want to redevelop it because you don't have private property rights in China. Um, everyone you know, in China who works land you know, as a farmer, they're there at the pleasure of the state. And as soon as the state no longer uh, is pleased by their presence, the state evicts them and they build high-rise apartments. But we in the West have <laughs> always understood to be more civilized. Uh, you know, we believe in private property rights and you can do what you want, you know, with your land and we can't force you to change. And, you know, that's all a bunch of bullshit. The people in the West are no better than the Chinese Communist Party. That's the truth. The folks in the European Union, arguably worse, because at least the Chinese Communist Party has uh, some concern about optics and about uh, the consent of the governed because they understand that if they push too far, uh, and they piss off their subjects, uh, they will have trouble uh, leading the country and they'll lose the mandate of heaven, even if they don't call it the mandate of heaven anymore. That that's concept kind of still exists in the Chinese mind, uh, in Chinese political culture, from what I understand. It's, it is their equivalent of the consent of the government. And it works the same way. You know, if you create, if the government creates too much uh, chaos and discord in society, uh, people lose faith in the regime, and that regime, uh, you know, a regime that has lost the faith of its subjects, uh, you know, is not long for this world. And the Europeans, they, they don't understand that. They haven't learned that lesson. They believe that they are omnipotent and that they can do whatever they want. And if they just command, okay, no more farming in the Netherlands, that all the, the Dutch farmers are just going to, you know, they're going to move into the cities. Just like when Mao commanded all the farmers and, and uh, you know, he collectivized the farms and moved most of the peasants into the cities and had them live in squalor. Um, people did that because Mao said so. And so Mark Rutte thinks, well, if I do the same thing here, um, I can accomplish the same thing. I can get these people off their land and then I can build high-rise apartments there and use it to house migrants. Frankly, what we're seeing in the Netherlands is no different than what you saw in Zimbabwe. They're just going about it a little differently. You know, the goal of the government is to expropriate the land. Uh, you know, in Zimbabwe, they were a little more direct about it. They said, okay, you're white folks, we want your land, uh, and we're gonna take it. And so they did. In the Netherlands, they're saying, well, you know, we're not gonna directly take your land yet, uh, but you can't use your land. And so if you can't use your land and you own all this land, you still have to pay property taxes. Uh, you still have to do something with it or else uh, to make money or else you're going to uh, have it expropriated by the government to pay your back taxes. And so the re end result will be that all the farmers who are shut down by the nitrogen ban will have to fire sale their farms uh, that have probably been in their families for uh, in some cases, centuries, and uh, Global Cap will buy it up. It will have some uh, some REITs and hedge funds that will buy up these properties. Uh, they will uh, you know, court uh, real estate developers, and they will uh, turn them into uh, you know high-rise apartments, uh, warehouses, uh, office space, and you know I, I I'm able to sound somewhat. Um, I guess, jovial about this uh, because I am trying to make fun of it because it, 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 it's this is one of the most infuriating stories that I've encountered, uh, you know, in my years on YouTube here. And, you know, the way I deal with, you know, anger is to try and uh, joke about it because I don't like being angry. I'm not an angry person. I don't want to be furious. I'm not one of these people who wants to get clicks by screaming into the microphone. That doesn't make me feel good. It's not fun. Um, I want to be happy, but this this is uh, forcing people into bankruptcy so you can steal their land. Is I mean that's the you're the lowest of the low. You know I'm reminded of you know classic stories of. People in, you know, big, big growing cities, you know, old men who live in their house and the real estate developer keeps coming and say, I want to buy your house so I can build a skyscraper, you know, on your property. 
and he says, "No, I like my house. I'm going to stay here." And he, and he, you know, one day he offers him half a million, and then you know, and a month later they come back and they offer a million, and eventually they offer him two million or three million, and the old man says, "No, no, no," to every single offer, no, and. In a free country with private property, you have the right to say no. That's why I believe in Rock, even uh, you know, in Rockefeller Center, not every building sold out to Rockefeller. Some resisted it, and they were able to keep their building. And you see, there's a couple of buildings that don't match, you know, all of the Art Deco architecture. And those are buildings that predated uh, Rockefeller Center and have survived. Uh, there is a uh, there was a story a couple months ago uh, about a uh, uh, a man I think he was in his 50s or 60s uh, down in uh, oh, gosh somewhere in Dade County it wasn't Miami proper um, but it was one of those like Miami Lakes I think I can't remember um, anyway a uh, developer wanted to come in and build high rise condos and bought out all of his neighbors and he didn't want to sell because. It was the house that uh, his father had bought, uh, af you know, after they uh, moved to America, and he worked a long time, you know, to to be able to afford that house, and then they paid it off, and you know, it's a symbol of pride uh, for him and his family. And his parents are, you know, dead and gone now, but he doesn't want to give up his house because it's important to him. And so they went and they built all around this guy he has no uh, he has almost no access to his property they had to build the their you know their condo development like over his driveway because they had to give him an easement to access his house because you know the road in front of his house doesn't even exist anymore because that was bought up too but and you know he might have sunlight for only 10 minutes a day but he got to keep his house. The, you know, there are giant, you know, five-story walls on either side of him. But he didn't want to leave, and he didn't have to. And so he's right there, right in the middle of that building. Because that's what private property means. It means it's yours, and no one can take it away from you. But in the Netherlands, they don't believe in that. Which is ironic, considering the Netherlands is, uh, you know, one of the, uh, historically been, you know, one of the most... Um, you know, capitalist countries going back centuries consistently, they practiced um, a very um, consistent and fair uh, form of capitalism. But they've thrown that all away, you know, in order to fully embrace global cap, you know, global capitalism and uh, the World Economic Forum uh, and, uh, you know, the neoliberal elitism. And I would say that, you know, other than the United Kingdom, uh, there is, there are few countries, there, there's almost, I would say there's no country other than the United Kingdom, specifically England, which I would consider to be more uh, similar to the United States in this sense, in terms of, you know, how the economy works and uh, the, you know, the commitment to private property and, uh, you know, these kinds of, uh, you know, this, this, segment of individual rights I would expect the Netherlands to be one of the last dominoes to fall and so if they're able to accomplish this in the Netherlands of all places uh, then we're only really one step removed from it happening here after all we do have in certain counties we do have you know nitrogen bans like this but it's not for this reason it's not it has nothing to do with climate change i mean that's that's the justification that the dutch are using is oh this is for climate change we have to stop eating we have to stop growing food for the sake of climate change we need to shut down all these farmers so that we can grab their land you know it's funny i don't hear the dutch calling uh on zelensky to shut down all the farming in ukraine no they're upset at russia for supposedly blockading uh, uh ukrainian grain exports now, it's only this land right here in the Netherlands where real estate is very, very scarce. Uh, you know, it's a very small country. There's not that much land. And, you know, what little land there is, uh, is historically been underwater. And the Dutch had to build uh, these dams and these levees and, and dikes um, in order to drain the swamp. Because that's what the Netherlands was. That's why it's called the Netherlands. It was the Low Countries. I would, I'm surprised that the environmentalists haven't called to, you know, bomb all those levees and let the natural water level come up. 
um, because, you know, you could never get away with, uh, you know, what the Netherlands is, um, you know, creating that today. I mean, that would be like damming up the Everglades and draining that. Because that's probably uh, what the Netherlands would look like were it not for all of their, uh, you know, their human interventions. But since that land has already been reclaimed, since it is there, uh, Global Cap wants to grab it and they want to develop it. And I have to say, um, there are few people on this planet I have more contempt for uh, than all, not every housing developer. I mean, hell, I've had, uh, or, or not even as just housing, but just real estate developers in general. Um, you know, and I've had them in my family. It's not that I hate all, you know, construction. It's not that I want everyone to live in a mud hut or something like that. But the way in which these soulless people uh, just completely uh, rake the land, scrape it clean, down to the dirt, remove all the soil, and then pave over it uh, with this... Uh, uh, impermeable surface and build these horrible cookie cutter houses or these horrible steel and glass buildings that all look the same that are com you know, that just they suck the life out of you and there's enough um there's enough people willing to go along with this you know that so much of it happens voluntarily but to think that the you know there are some people on this planet who resist it and say you know what no i don't want to um let my country turn into that I'm going to hold on to my land. I'm going to keep growing food. I'm going to keep it looking green. And to think that they are being ex extorted like this, uh, expropriated, it's, it's sickening, it's scary. And I'm glad to see that they're standing up. And... Uh, you know what? People say, oh, well, you know, if only the Dutch had the Second Amendment, you know, they, no. You know what? If the police want to gun all these guys down like Tiananmen Square, that'll be, uh, that'll make enough of a statement. It's more powerful because these people are unarmed. I want to see them cause as much ruckus as possible, um, and hopefully they'll get further than the Canadians did. Uh, because, uh, you know, the Canadians, they were shut down, and it was, uh, it was sad. But uh, that was as far as it went. But, you know, the more people do this, the more copycats it will inspire, even, even though the Canadians failed. And, you know, I mean, even Viva Fry has now moved to Florida. Uh, of course, he went to the East Coast. God knows why. But, hell, there's enough of us here on the West Coast. Um, it's overcrowded as it is, uh, I guess, you know happy to see people go to the east coast hey any of you if you're thinking of moving to florida go to the east coast go to miami you know it's great there i promise what the hell i mean you know what's happening to the west i mean i think that um i say this a lot but i i feel like i'm one of the last people who will remember the west as a beacon of freedom at one point because as of now as of 2022 that's completely gone the Netherlands has turned into Zimbabwe. Need I say more? We're not seeing Eastern Europe backslide into communism. We're not seeing the Poles expropriate farmland. We're seeing the Dutch do it. But this is just, uh, I guess, further confirmation that opposing uh, the climate change agenda is the, the most important, um, that's the most important issue you got to point to things like this and say, is this about the climate or is it about a land grab? Obviously, it's about a land grab. They will take this climate narrative and use it to push whatever is in their interests, whether it be cars or uh, shoving people into apartments or making you take an Uber, you know, a self-driving electric Uber. It's all a part of the grift. So you know what? I won't talk about the Georgia Guidestones. I'm just going to cut it off here.